thanks for dropping in. Since its release this summer, the Super Toggly Fidget Button has been one of my most popular designs. Popular to the people using it, that is. I can't say it's well beloved by those who aren't doing the clicking. So, just like the Twist Lock Coffin and the Twist Lock Pumpkin, we're bringing the Fidget Button back with a Halloween makeover. In this redesign, a cobblestone wall frames a pair of tombstone-shaped buttons. The outer case that forms this wall isn't just aesthetic. It rounds off all the corners of the fidget toy, which is something that bothered me a lot with the old design. It also aligns and holds the two inner case sections tightly together, without requiring glue. Since the outer case is doing all the work of keeping everything together, the inner cases could be simplified. All the walls were thinned for quicker printing. Most of the alignment pegs that used to run around the edge of this piece have been completely removed. The central post that holds the rotating toggle piece has now been split out into its own part where it can be printed in a much stronger orientation. You might not be able to see, but this post is actually a long hexagon. This is both easier to print, but it also locks the post into the same orientation as the toggle. Well, why does that matter? It means that anything attached to this post will rotate too. Like, for example, a happy dancing bat. It's totally optional, but I think it really adds something to the click. That's not all there is to this redesign, though. If you choose, you can replace one or more of this tombstone with this alternate open tombstone design. When you press the open tombstone down, it reveals the grave zombie occupant. Now, I definitely say that the plain tombstone makes for a better fidget toy. It's just easier to click. However, the addition of the undead to the model somehow makes it feel more lively. And here's a closer look of our new zombie friend. This guy took a few tries to get right. My initial plan was to launch the zombie from the grave when it popped out. It does work, but I found that searching for the lost print each time was more annoying than was worth it. If you prefer this option, the project does include a catapult tombstone. Just supply the ammo of your choice. In my second attempt, I locked the zombie to the tombstone. The momentum still makes it pop up, but it doesn't go flying. This looks pretty awesome in slow-mo. It's a big disappointment in person though, because the zombie falls right back down before you could see what it was. So I settled on a solution that would hold the zombie in place as the tombstone collapsed around it. The new design changes the assembly a bit. So let's take all these parts and build a new copy. My first tip is not to wear mad scientist gloves. They look great, but they make this whole process a whole lot more difficult. I, however, will be ignoring that advice. Let's get to building. First, you'll want to take the spring. One side has a bit of a scoop carved out of it. This scoop is going to be facing down. Next, take one of the inner cases. It doesn't matter which one. And fit the spring in these small notches inside this case. This might be a tight fit. If so, you should be able to force it without any real damage. If you absolutely have to, any of these pieces that are too tight can be sanded down pretty easily. Next, we're going to take the toggle and place it approximately in its final position. We don't have anything to lock it into place yet, just put it where it's going to end up. For this assembly, I'm going to use one normal tombstone and one open tombstone. Let's do the normal tombstone first, that'll be easier to show. Just slide the tombstone into the case like this and around the toggle. Then take one of these small pins that you can't see at all in these gloves. Then take one of these small pins and lock the tombstone into place with a toggle. Make sure that it actually went through the hole in the toggle and then just slide beside it. Now we're going to take the open tombstone and start out with the same process. Slide it into place around the toggle and lock it in with a pin. The next step is a little tricky. We're going to add this zombie. It has a little notch on one side that fits into the case right here but it also needs to slip inside the tombstone. So it's easy to just angle it into the tombstone first like that, then around and slide it into the notch. Now we take the other case and close it up. At this point, you should have a reliable but extremely soft click. It's soft because the toggle isn't being pushed against the spring yet. We're going to take this assembled case and slide it into the outer case. This shouldn't be too tight, but if it is, a little bit of force should be fine. Now we're going to take the central post and slide it through the hole in the front of the case, through the toggle in the center, and part of the way out of the hole in the back of the case. Because it's an octagon, the way it's rotated does matter, 
So if it's not going in, it might just be rotated incorrectly. So I'm first going to make sure that I can see all the way through the case. If you can't, it may mean that the toggle's out of place. You need to shake it a little bit to get it right back into alignment. Now take the pin and rotate it and push it until it gets all the way through the toggle. I can already tell that I'm in the toggle because it's affecting the click and the post is rotating with the toggle. So now I just need to keep on applying force until I get it all the way through. And there we go. In order to get the post through, I did have to push the whole thing against the table, but that worked out just fine. And the click is a lot snappier. We could stop right here, but I'm going to add these decorative bat elements. They just get pushed right onto the post. And if it's tight enough, you probably don't need to use any glue. If you do need to use glue, I'd recommend just trying to glue only one of them. So that way you could always take the post out later if you needed to. The bats rotate so that one wing is raised, pointing toward the gravestone that's open. You, you could press it on in any orientation, but that's the one that kind of works with the movement of the device. So I'm going to place the bat on the peg and just rotate it gently until it finds the right orientation and then press. Now we're going to do the same on the back side. Remember that the wing should point up toward the button that's raised. That one felt slightly tighter, but both went on just fine and neither of them are going to come off just from shaking. And there you go, a fully assembled Halloween toggle button with a stone-faced zombie. Two weeks ago, I asked you for your favorite Halloween monsters. I haven't forgotten about that. I plan to create a few more monster inserts for this design based off your answers. So keep an eye out for some small updates relating to that over the next month. Next week, I plan to release a Fusion 360 how-to video for modeling a pumpkin. If you have any Fusion 360 questions you'd like for me to cover, add those into the comments section below. If it's something I know how to do, it might get added into next week's video. Or if it's complex enough, it might become a video on its own. Until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by.